Welcome to Twin Peaks, The Gifted and the Damned. My name's Bubba. You can find me on Twitter at Fit and Trim. That's F-I-T-T-E-N-T-R-I-M, at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And with me, as always, my missing right arm man. That's right. To me is Mork. Mork, That's right. how are you doing? How can people find you on Twitter? Oh, it's good to be here, Bubba. They can find me at Extraordinary on Twitter. Now, Mork, you look sharp. You dressed up because we have a special guest today. I, I do. Thank you. You're actually looking uh, very, very tidy as well. Did you uh, make a trip down to Horns this uh, past weekend? Had to look sharp for all the people on the audio podcast. I so let's bring him in. You're wearing a different sweater than yesterday. It is. Color's better on you. Oh, hi. I forgot my manners. I'm Harold Smith. Harold Smith. Harold Smith. Oof. He told me he was just hanging around, had nothing to just do, so he around. wanted to come down to the Twin Peaks, the Gifted and the Damn podcast. Thank you, Harold. Just so you know, this is uh, one of the podcasts in the Double P Podcast Network family. We do shows about Game of Thrones, The Strain, Ash vs. Evil Dead. We did one about the BBC miniseries Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And we want you to kind of be a part of our family and to make you a part of our family. We're going to ask you to visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash double P podcast. That's the word double, the single letter P, and the word podcast plural. Facebook.com slash double P podcast. And do you know, Mork, Mm -hmm. if they go and like our Facebook page Uh and they write a written review on iTunes. They do both. They do both. So it's not just you give us stars on iTunes. You write up a little review. It doesn't even have to be positive. No, not at all. But if you do both. Uh Uh-huh. Listeners, you will be eligible to win one of the special, exclusive prizes we picked up at the David Lynch's Festival of Destruction. Uh, excuse me, of disruption. And disruption. <laughs> of disruption in downtown Los Angeles. We have exclusive Twin Peaks goodies that we're going to be giving away. And because we want to get listeners hooked in quickly, if you can do this by December 2016, and to be honest, let's be honest, let's, a lot of people don't want to do stuff. Can we be honest, Harold? But you're just like all the others. You lie. And you betray. And then you laugh about it. You are unclean. No. You know, chill out, Harold. This is fun. This is for everybody. Thank you, Harold. Harold, if they do this by... December of 2016. And i, I got to be honest, I think not many people will. But if you like the Facebook page, give us a written review here on the Twin Peaks, the Gifted in the Damn podcast. You will be eligible to win one of these T-shirts, these coasters, these matchbooks, these posters, all this great stuff we got at the Festival of Disruption. It's pretty amazing. We want to tell you what we plan to do here on the Twin Peaks, the Gifted in the Damn podcast. This is a special episode. Yeah, it is. And so we got to be... Honest with you right up front. This is going to be a spoiler-filled podcast. If you haven't watched the first and second season of Twin Peaks... Got to do it. And if you haven't watched Fire Walk With Me... Do it now. You may be spoiled. We apologize for that. There's some great, a bunch of great Twin Peaks podcasts out there. Some of my favorites, there's one called Sparkwood in 21. Plus, there's also a great one from our good friends across the pond in jolly old England called Diane. And they're great podcasts for newbies. Feel free to check them out, and we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks, not today because the book's not out yet, but over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be reading, Mork. What do you think about that? Reading? What's that? Yeah, it's it's something that people who don't listen to podcasts don't do. Oh, okay. Fair we're enough. We're going to be re- having a read-along section of the podcast based around Mark Frost's upcoming book. It's going to be released in just about seven days from now, entitled... The Secret History of Twin Peaks. Are you excited? I cannot tell you how excited I am, Bubba. So what we're going to be doing over the next several podcasts is we're going to read approximately about 50 pages in the book. We don't have the book yet. We don't know how the chapters break down. But we're going to read about 50 pages of the book, and then we're going to cover them in detail. We're going to see if there are any... Should we be mentioning books around Harold? He is not known to treat his books or any (laughs) books with the care and the respect that they deserve. So... 
Harold. I, just, I hope he doesn't get any ideas. Don't take it personal, Harold. No, don't at all. So anyway, we'll be breaking down up. Approximately 50 pages at a time. We'll break it down. We'll talk about if there are any clues for season three. Yes. We'll be talking about any references they're making back to the uh, previous shows and uh, previous books that we've gotten. Plus, people who've already gotten the books have said there are a couple of inconsistencies where the book Mm. contradicts something we saw on the show. So we'll talk about those two. Everybody go purchase Mark Frost's new book. Give him some money. Pre-order it now. (laughs) We'll be covering it as we go. So now, once again, this podcast is for the initiated, the people who've seen everything. The gifted. And the damned. And I was looking to create a podcast here on the Double P Podcast Network that would fill a void that I don't feel a lot of the other Twin Peaks podcasts are able to fill. And do you know what that is, Mork? Um... No. <laughs> well, I was thinking I was thinking that there are some missing pieces out there in podcasts. And what that is is that even though I love a bunch of podcasts, they don't really get to the truth. And they're not doing it maliciously. It's just they weren't watching Twin Peaks 25 years ago. Yeah, that's because they pay- they're, they're much younger than we are. Edit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are much younger than us. Suckers. And so if you are trying to you know read articles and maybe read – wikipedia pages and some and stuff like that a lot of times you're getting a misrepresentation of the show and everything that was happening around it and so in the decades since the show has been on the air a lot of myths a lot of legend you know Mm -hmm. if if, ignore the fact print the legend exactly and so we're going to try to get to some of the truth of it here on the gifted in the damn podcast and tonight we're going to get to one of the most basic facts and that is we're going to explain why Twin Peaks was canceled in the first place. Oh, you got it. Why? T- please tell me why. Well, I can't spoil it now. That's a secret for the end of the podcast. Do you know what the ultimate secret is? You want to know? Okay, Her- yes, we know, Harold. Yes. Laura did. <laughs> Laura knew who killed her. That was a great secret, great secret there. Well, a lot of good that did. Who killed you. Right, but, okay, we won't Laura. give the answer until the end. Yeah. But I've got a hint for you guys. Sweeps. Sweeps. Yeah, Sweeps, believe it or not, had one of the biggest effects on the television show Twin Peaks. In some ways, bigger effects than many things which the writers, directors, or even actors did. Sweeps is the answer to some of the most basic questions about the airing of Twin Peaks on television. So, for example, why was the show originally airing on Thursday nights at 9 p.m. opposite the number one television program in America at the time, the ratings-dominating sitcom Cheers? Uh, Sweeps? You knew it, Mort. Great. You know, how about this question? Why did then the last episode of the first season suddenly switch its time slot and air on a Wednesday night at 10 p.m.? Sweeps? Right again. You're two for two. This is awesome. Why was the reveal of Who Killed Laura Palmer placed in the Season 2, Episode 7? Sweeps. Totally sweeps. Three for three, Mork. You're great. Why was Twin Peaks yanked off the schedule on February 16th and not put back on the air again until March? Uh, I'm thinking sweeps. Amen, brother. Why were the last two episodes of Twin Peaks pulled from ABC's lineup and held and didn't air until months later on June 10th? It's not sweeps, was it? It was sweeps. What? Now, Mork, one last question for you. Can you guess which word does not appear on the Wikipedia entry for Twin Peaks? I'm going to guess either corn or or sweeps. Sweeps is right. (laughs) You know... There are a lot of great questions about Twin Peaks. Whatever mm-hmm. happened to Little Nicky? Oh, sweeps. No, wait, wait, no, 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 no. Okay. No, Harold, Harold likes that answer. All right, so Bubba, uh, Bubba and I have a question that all of our double L's. Double L's? Loyal listeners. And really, to show loyalty so early on a podcast is, is you people are sick. Uh, <laughs> but you're probably asking yourselves, what are sweeps? You know what, Mork? Let's hold off on that again. No, sweeps. <laughs> sweeps, 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 sweeps. Once again, we're going to get, and we're going to get over the... Gifted in the damn podcast to be tackling a lot of these Twin Peaks legends and myths, and we're going to set the record straight. Now, let me say that Twin Peaks is my favorite yeah. television series of all time. Yeah. But let me say, as a quote unquote objective person, sure. I can see that it's not the best television program of all time. I would give that up to Breaking Bad, I would give that 
up to the wire. I find those shows technically better, but Twin Peaks is my favorite. I have enjoyed it the most. The highs always reached higher than any show uh, brought me, and it's the show I've thought the most about over my whole life. I really love it. Yeah. And uh, what do you think? How no, did you... I, I look. I mean, I think anyone who remembered the final episode, um, you know, Firewalk with me, there was a lot of really, really cool things about it, but it was a pretty impossible thing to do. Uh, what they were trying to do, and they tried, and it, and I think it's very cool. If you haven't seen it, do definitely go see it. But yeah, the the fact is that there had never been a show like it, and I, I mean. It, I can't imagine any show today being continued in 25 years. Like, I, as good as those shows are, the, the, the Wire, Breaking Bad, Sopranos, Go to Mad Men, I, I can't imagine them having the same kind of impact. Where, oh yeah, we could go back to that 25 years from now. And of course, part of that is because, yeah, they ended a season two, so they only had 30 some episodes. It was not like well, they they ended on such an crazy cliffhanger that exactly. we all. Just yeah. destroyed us to see Agent right. Cooper ended up like he did. Yeah, it's just it's what they did, and they were sort of forced to do it. And none of us wanted them to do it. We were all crushed when it when it happened because I remember. I mean, this is the first time you know I was in high school, and yeah, yeah, I, of course. I I I remember having to figure out who could I you know cadge rides off of in order to go to Christina Dunbar Hester's basement and watch Twin. Pe you know, like oh, it was yeah. this was the first event television that uh you know i remember really being part of and so i don't know if you can say that there were shows that were really better than this because i mean they had there there were more episodes maybe mm -hmm. there were some definitely some some clunkers some some head smackers as uh you know we've seen from time to time I, you know occasionally you know while watching the strain hashtag got your milk hashtag mork fisting uh <laughs> but anyway this is a very long-winded answer but you know what it's been 25 years in the making so i'm sorry but no, i'm i'm very very excited that it's back and this is gonna be really really fun this is gonna be awesome now before we get to that infamous answer of yeah. why twin peaks sweeps. was canceled yeah no no that sweeps the close close little close nicky one. Boy, he might be an answer in there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're going to get our listeners, we want you to get you guys in the right mindset to mm. delve into the truth of 25 years ago and a television show airing on the American Broadcasting Television Company. So we're going to take a look at some fun Twin Peaks artifacts from my collection from a quarter century ago. We're going to look yes. at the inaugural publication of the promotional material entitled The Twin Peaks Gazette, as well as I'm going to read a bit from uh, the fan group Coop, which was, yeah. of course, titled The Citizens Opposing the Offing of Peaks, which was a fan-created group to make sure the show didn't get canceled. We're going to look at those before we get to the sure. actual answer of why it was canceled. Yeah, and uh, congrats, because it, it finally worked. Right, exactly. Way to go, Coop. Way to go, Coop. Way to go, Coop. So let's talk about the Twin Peaks Gazette. This yes. was something that... Uh, I'm not even sure exactly how I found out about it, but I was right. such a big Twin Peaks fan and yeah. sending these letters in that uh -huh. I actually got two copies of the Twin Peaks and Gazette beautiful. mailed to me constantly. The, yeah. No, they they were beautiful. They featured – it was sort of a mix of uh, a fan club letter as well as this is the actual Twin Peaks Gazette. So you had ads for Horn's Department Store, including some things that if they actually had been in there, you would have hoped that – you know, Agent Cooper would have noticed them immediately. <laughs> like, what? Uh, go ahead and tell everybody what was the what was the oddest one you found? Oh well, at Horns, I mean, I think it's a combination of there's some sweaters and there's also oh, there's here's some lingerie from Jax. Now, why would they be doing a cross promotion between the infamous whorehouse across the border and the wholesome department store that uh, that's serving all of uh, Twin Peaks and uh, guests of the Great Northern Hotel? Why would they make it so convenient? I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, that's a great they, question. Now, what's funny is in this ad for Horn's Department Store, they said the lingerie, sorry, sold out. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ordering it uh, for well, one-eyed jacks. Yeah, well, they had, you know, the, the problem was they didn't have enough playing cards in the uh, gift shop. So it wasn't so much that they ran out of the, the lingerie. It was the decks of cards that they had to sew, <laughs> which you've seen. Now, there's, some of this stuff was just totally aimed at fans and slightly silly. The very yeah. first headline, the, the, the above-the-fold headline here right. on the Twin Peaks Gazette of the first uh, issue yeah. is Agent Cooper makes black ties best dressed FBI agents list. And that's Seems light. totally fair. Right. <laughs> I didn't vote totally for him. Fair. No, but he did look pretty dreamy there. 
Yeah, and to be different. honest, even as a as a young <laughs> young kid, I yeah. I knew this wasn't the type of stuff I really cared about. Also on the front page, you had a Audrey Horn look alike photo contest oh, which is something they do at, at like the twin peak fest they still hold was, nowadays but was you know i mean was the the uh the debate over sherilyn fenn versus Cheryl Lee was that you know was oh, there's that the no Farrah debate. fawcett raquel welch no i oh that's a, no that's a good call that's a good know, call i mean like it i remember i remember people being and you know people like me who had no shot at either of them debating this furiously into the night it was it was fantastic all, all sorts of interesting, interesting things happened in Christina Dunbar Hester's basement. None of them, <laughs> none of them were what we wanted, but still, we had Twin Peaks to talk about. To place an idea of when in the show this happened, everybody, if you look at the editorial and news, it's talking about Dougie Milford dies on wedding night. So this would have been <laughs> approximately they written or at least uh, aimed at the shows that aired in January and February of nineteen. 19- 91. Well, so, also to give people a sense of when this came out was if they did have a computer column. And if you wanted <laughs> to talk to other fellow weirdos, you could telecommune, depending if you had a Mac or an Apple or a, a, a Ameri- PM or a Commodore. Uh, yeah, on your Commodore com- computer. That's yeah. that's the, really how they wanted to do it. And so if you were on CompuServe, you could get into one of their chat rooms. And I, I got mean, into those a bunch, to be I honest. You if you did, were on you. America on dash line. Yeah. <laughs> now, that... one of us, one of us, I'm not going to say who, but one of us who's holding this uh, amazing Twin Cities Gazette still does have a Prodigy email address. All right. We so, were, right. Um... Reach me at fitten <laughs> at prodigy.net. Hey, I got it when I was a kid. I still have it. That's, still, that's brand loyalty. It still works. It still works. It was advertising. There's a little advertisement. It, of course, it's written as an article, but there's an advertisement where it was talking that the Twin Peaks Access Guide, the third official book released back when the show was on the air, was about to be released. There were letters to the editor, and there was a section that they always did, and you know, I was really subscribing to this, hoping that they would give me clues about upcoming episodes. And the one that I was always thinking that would give me clues was they had a section called Ask Chatterjee. And so I was reading this section entirely so close to see, ooh, will this give me a hint of what's to come in future episodes of Twin Peaks? And let me say, there were never any clues in Ask Chatterjee about what to, about what was going to come up on future episodes. They were... Not yet. Right. Oh, that's true. Maybe you think Not they were spoiling yet. season three? Yeah, they could have. I mean, this is sort of you writing in to get this is almost like somebody writing into Flesh World. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. Uh, but no, so this thing is, is fantastic. It does have an actual interview with a very, very young looking Richard Boehmer who yeah, played. They, right, who played Benjamin Horn. Benjamin of Horn. course, but the photo accompanying the interview is from like when he appeared in West Side Story in yeah. the 60s. So it's in like, here's young. Something tells me he probably submitted that photo himself he's like sure use this one from 60 years ago uh they had some notes about what some of the uh you know some of the notables were up to uh what david lynch uh also rogers auto and sparkwood if you got some deer damage it's the place to go right let me point out that one of the things they were advertising here in the twin peaks gazette is a twin peaks radio show that was airing on a station in san francisco another one in new york city and k-rock here in los angeles where people would talk about twin peaks amazing on the radio can you imagine people tuning in to listen to other people talk about twin peaks they were they crazy. Were, they were ahead of their time. What's wrong with these people? So You're just right. so everybody knows, the Twin Peaks Gazette, its address was P.O. Box 1804, Pacific Palisades, California, 90272. So I want somebody. I want somebody out there. Test it. Right. See if it's still working. Uh, email. Or sorry, email. Duh. <laughs> Write a letter <laughs> yeah. to that P.O. Box, the Twin Peaks Gazette. P.O. Box 1804, Pacific Palisades, California, 90272. I want to know if you would get a response. And tell you what, if they send you anything cool, uh, we'll take half. <laughs> yeah, sure. We as, will take cool half. As, as part of the deal. Now, Bubba, you have a couple of pretty cool letters in your hand. Why don't you, why don't you tell us about those? Okay, so Twin Peaks got pulled off the air. Yeah. The first time in February of 1991. And I always love telling this story. So I went to the computer lab. You know, back then, people didn't have yeah. iPhones or anything. You know, I was on Prodigy, CopyServe, right. in the message boards. Yeah. We had known from other television shows that if ABC got a lot of letters, they might bring it back. So I remember being at school, and I went into the computer lab to write a letter. Hey, I want Twin Peaks back on the air. What makes it stand out so much is I went into the computer lab, and I was in there, and there was another 
student. <laughs> There's another kid in the computer lab yeah, also thing. writing a letter to ABC. It was incredible. Later found yeah. out about this group Peaks. And so sure enough, I started writing them so I could be officially on their mailing list. Once oh, again, sure. this is mailing actual letters. And so they would send out letters to everybody who loved Peaks. It's all, you know this prototypical fan club. Coop, citizens opposing the offering of ping, Twin Peaks, the offing of Peaks, excuse me. And so they would send you letters occasionally on the efforts and what they've been doing and how they were going. And so I'm going to read a letter that I got from June 5th, 1991. I've kept it with me all this time. It says, Dear Coop members, as you are surely well aware, ABC's fall lineup was announced late last month. Painfully absent from the schedule was Twin Peaks. So they're talking about after season two aired, it yes, so wasn't on season it. three. And they call Peaks the network television sole creative exercise. However, it is <laughs> not time to mourn the death of Agent Cooper. Not yet. Unfortunately, Lynch Frost has exhausted all opposition in options, excuse me, in their attempt to keep Peaks on the air in forthcoming seasons. ABC TV dropped the ball and no other network stepped forward to pick up the financial slack. Without proper investments, the production company did not want to drastically cut back on quality just to put out the show on TV. David Lynch has assured both of us, and these people are H. Keith Posta, Poston, excuse me, and Michael Caputo, who was the quote unquote national director and mm -hmm. Poston was the national president. They say David Lynch has assured both of us that the antics of the small northwestern logging town will live on. Where, comma, they are not quite certain yet, but Peaks could be destined for the movie houses. The so movie here, houses. spoiler alert, they have a great thing. Uh, I don't want to read the whole letter, letter. I'll post it to our Facebook page. Very cool. But they have a thing underlined where they said, next. Please take a moment today to jot down a few names and addresses of your friends who are Twin Peaks fans and drop them in the mail to us. We need to get as many people involved in the effort to support the work of Lynch Frost Productions as possible. We need your input. Is this is this crazy or what? These guys, Keith and Michael, really pushing They on. are making it happen. Now, a few months later, and this will also be up on, uh, on our Facebook page. Yeah, from uh, September 24th of 1991. Dear, I got I got him another letter, so read it, Mork. Well, it, it, it starts off, won't read the whole thing, but it is happening again. Twin Peaks is really returning, this time to your local movie theater. David Lynch asked us, asked us, that's amazing, to contact each of our 10,000 members and fill them in on the forthcoming feature film. He sends along his best wishes and thanks for your support. So that'll be up on the, uh, on the, on the, on the Facebook page as well. Very, very cool. Um... Man, you were writing in letters 25 years. That's insane. Yeah, can you believe it? No. It was it was just like it was yesterday. It is. So uh, Okay, so you know what, Mork? We've kept people waiting long enough. We need to answer the question. Let's do it. And set the record straight. Why was Twin Peaks canceled? And I want you to read the Wikipedia entry on yeah. Twin Peaks, and it's under a subheading entitled Declining Ratings. All right. Quote, with the resolution of Twin Peaks' main drawing point, Laura Palmer's murder in the middle of the second season, and with subsequent storylines becoming more obscure and drawn out, public interest began to wane. This discontent, coupled with ABC changing its time slot on a number of occasions, led to a huge drops in the show's ratings after being one of the most watched television programs in the United States in 1990. Now, Mork, let me tell you something. Yeah, tell me. That tell Wikipedia me. entry is filled with what I like to call double M. Double M's? Yes. Well, double M is a term I like to use when I talk about misconceptions and mistakes. Oh. Basically, because that Wikipedia entry is just a giant lie. What? Wikipedia never lies. It did. Harold, what do you think of liars? But you're just like all the others. You lie. And you betray. And then you laugh about it. You are unclean. Okay, calm down. Harold. Uh, Harold, I'll give you another cookie. Just... So I'm going to start at the end of the paragraph, which reads, Twin Peaks was one of the most watched television programs in the United States in 1990. It wasn't. Only two. That's right, only two episodes of Twin Peaks ever won their time period ratings. Hmm. Those were the premiere episode of Twin Peaks, which aired on April 8th, 1990, on a Sunday night opposite the Ten Commandments. Was it a new episode of the Ten Commandments? Where's your pharaoh now, Cooper? Oh, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> And it was uh, that premiere was the fifth most watched episode of the week. And then the next episode to air of Twin Peaks was on a Thursday, its regular time slot, on April 12th. And it was opposite a rerun of Cheers. And so wow. it won its time slot. 
but just barely. It huh. barely beat a rerun of Cheers in the ratings. Who knew? So I've heard a few other podcasters and other people say things like, well, you know, it was that episode with the dream sequence. When the dream sequence hit, normal Americans checked out and stopped watching. But you know what? That's not true. Huh. They didn't stop watching because they didn't watch it in the first place. <laughs> Cheers came back with an original episodes and beat Twin Peaks in the rating. Cheers won from 9 to 9.30, and then a new show, the pilot of a sitcom called Wings, oh, won from 9.30 to 10. They Lloyd. beat Wings, a brand new show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> beat Twin Peaks by nine share points. Huh. So it was the third. By that point, Twin Peaks had aired on TV three times. The show finished 28th in the ratings. Really not too bad considering it was opposite Cheers. Right. But look what happened the next week, Mark. Tell everybody what happened then. Much like when uh, Michael Jordan returned, uh, he was wearing number 45. It, 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 fall, it was number 45th in the ratings for the week. Right. Now, what I should point out is if you look at ratings nowadays with the infamous 500 channels with everything on, this is back in the time of the big three, yeah. ABC, CBS, and Fox NBC. Fox was on at this time, but they were so small, and yeah. they didn't air on every night of the week, so they were barely kind of right. okay. there. But they did count Fox shows. So if you added up the big three and Fox shows— there were 91 shows on the air that they counted ratings for. Twin Peaks 45. being at 45 right in the middle. Wow. Now, that was the episode, so just so everybody's aware, that was the episode of Laura's funeral. And after it aired, so this is the fourth time Twin Peaks has been on the air. A huh. TV critic for the Orlando Sentinel wrote, Mediocre ratings mean ABC will be less tempted to turn Twin Peaks into a regular series next fall. A.K.A. it won't get renewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to reiterate. Reiterate the point. After only the fourth time Twin Peaks has ever appeared on TV, the ratings were described, let's be honest, sadly and correctly, as mediocre. And renewal for season two was huh. already in doubt. It didn't feel. It did not feel like that when we were in Christina Dunbar Hester's basement. I am not going to lie. That is a great point. It sure didn't. There were actually only four of us, though. So maybe I should, <laughs> maybe it was not as popular as it felt. Why weren't you guys registering in the Nissan we, ratings? We were, we were the lowest rated uh, click in our high school, I guarantee so you. So when Wikipedia says Twin Peaks was one of the most watched television programs in 1990, uh, would you call that yeah. true more? Co compared to what? Yeah, I, that, is, uh, that is amazing. In fact, even to say things like the first season of Twin Peaks was a big hit— uh, that really wasn't true wow. either. In fact, it was very likely going to be canceled yeah. at this point, but Twin Peaks had a very passionate, very vocal fan base. There were millions of us, let's be honest, out sure. there, and we were talking about it. We were making a lot of noise. But it was never really ever a ratings hit. To think about it now, it's pretty, it's pretty mind-blowing that it wasn't, because especially now, this would have, I mean, you know, obviously it's a much different landscape where yeah. you have, you know, with, with, 500 channels and DVR and everything like that, where this would have been massive. I mean, and, and also, I mean, I'm curious. I'd like to actually go back and, like, see what those numbers are because I'm sure compared to whatever whatever Walking Dead is doing or, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that it'd be, you know, it'd be double that probably. Oh, right. If you got the number of people watching now, yeah. it, it would be a huge hit by now standards. But back then, by 1990 standards, it wasn't a big hit at all. Yeah. No, no, no. Because they had what they called up against Cheers. Right, exactly. Why would you go up against Cheers? So let's get to that point, oh Mark. And that's where we're going to get to our infamous word, sweeps. Sweeps? Yes. So here's where we get to sweeps. And Mark, why don't you go ahead and describe for everybody what sweeps are. Oh, but let, I would love to do that. Okay, everybody, roll up your sleeves. Not you, Harold. Your <laughs> cuffs are perfect. Okay, so Nielsen ratings are the primary source of audience measurement information in the TV industry around the world. Right. And uh, that's how stations figure out how much to charge for advertising. So they set the rates based on the numbers and the demographics of the people watching. So in the pre-digital age, which even though they had CompuServe and Tele... <laughs> And Prodigy! And party on Prodigy, everyone! Uh, and keywords. In the pre-digital age, there were uh, electronic means of tracking TV view There were electronic means of tracking TV viewers. Most of the ratings were done on paper diaries. Yeah, think about this. The ratings were done on paper. People writing down on paper. That's amazing. So 2 million households across the country, that's the U.S. country, the country of the U.S., would scribble in diaries when they're watching how many people are watching. Talk about the second screen. Talk about being described. Right. distracted while watching a TV show. That's why I got low ratings. People got distracted from uh, scribbling in the notebook by the good TV that was on. They didn't know what to write down. So they get a new diary for each week in November, February, May, and July. 
and these sweeps of viewers were and still are amazingly important and are the basis for TV schedules and revenue. Uh, TV stations need to have great ratings during these periods called sweeps uh, because that's how they make their money. That's also how they stay in business. So uh, great ratings during sweeps. You can make more money because you charge more for commercials. Everybody wins. Bob's your uncle. And here comes... Bob's my uncle. Bob is your uncle. Season 12. Of He's your father! Of Basketball Wives. <laughs> so once again, let's go through those sweep months. The sweep months were November, February, May, and July. Now, Twin Peaks debuted in kind of... You are like the Agent Cooper of of ratings right. and sweeps yeah. and uh, TV show programming conspiracy theories. I love this. Well, Twin Peaks debuted in kind of mid-April, yeah. which meant most of the first season of Twin Peaks was going to air in May sweeps, excuse me, uh-huh. when ratings were most important, a.k.a. that's the only way ABC could make money. Now, a few creative types at ABC had greenlit the Twin Peaks pilot, but when they showed it to other executives, a.k.a. the people who sold the ads, the people who brought in the cash, they didn't think it would do well in the ratings. They didn't think it would bring in ads. They think they'd have trouble selling it. And they fought internally about whether to make more episodes, whether to make a first season. Huh. And this fight pretty much ended up being where ABC came down and they basically said, okay, listen, you know what? We'll make a short season. We'll only have, uh, we'll have the pilot. Then we'll make seven more episodes and we'll try it out. Yeah. But then they made this pilot. They made the seven episodes and the executives at ABC were still nervous. They still didn't want to put it on the air. They thought, well, we can't air this. This won't make us any money. That's crazy. But there was good news for Twin Peaks. You know what that Twin Peaks was, Bork? Uh, sweeps? No, not yet. No, they were in last place. ABC was in last place <laughs> of the big three. They were willing to take a chance. But they even in that chance, they made it a slight chance. They knew the show was the gamble, so they put it in the place where it was the safest bet. They scheduled it opposite Cheers because they got, were already getting crushed by Cheers. Got nothing to lose, baby. I love it. Nowhere it, to go but up. And sure enough, Twin Peaks was put opposite Cheers, and it got crushed. But demographically, you know, think about this. Demographically, where a lot of the people watching were sure. more affluent, they were definitely younger viewers. Right. They were down in – how old were the people in your basement watching this work? Uh, let's see. I was probably a sophomore or junior in high school. So right, yeah. Right. yeah. It was um, it was rough. So still another 20 years to go before I lost my virginity. Hell yeah. And anyway. <laughs> so, so let's get to the final episode of the first season. Okay. Because while these are referred to as May sweeps, yeah. sweeps – they don't go from May 1st to May 31st. Right, right. It's a four-week period, and Sweep starts on a Thursday night before the first of the month. Yeah. Which meant May Sweeps in 1990 started on April 26th, oh, and Sweeps man. ended on May tw- Wednesday, Wednesday, May 23rd. Twin Peaks' final episode of season one, if it had stayed on Thursday nights, it was going to air on Thursday, May 24th, the day after Sweeps ended. It's all coming together. ABC knew that soap opera fans tuned in in higher numbers to yeah. the season finale. That's sure. Twin Peaks was a soap opera. So and anyway, it, ABC is like, okay, the final episode of Twin Peaks will have a boost in the ratings, but we can't have that we gotta have that rating boost happen during sweep. So they moved it to Wednesday night at ten PM. And they made ads and they kinda let things hint that, ooh, you know what? You might find out in this last episode who killed Laura Palmer. You might. Now you would think, right, they yeah. knew they knew the episode, they knew viewers right. won it. Yeah. But think about it. You're in last place in the ratings. If you're doing bad and you're an executive at ABC, U-S-O-B. you might lose your job. U-S-O-B. So are you worried about, oh, I might upset some Twin Peaks fans for getting their hopes up that the killer would be resolved? Or yeah. is there a chance that this little boost right. is going to help me keep my gosh keep darn my job. job? Yeah, exactly. I got, I got, uh, I, I do not want my kids going to a state school. I, I went to a state school. Um, and I wish I hadn't. So, okay. So the final episode of season one, it, it did, there was a little bit of bounce. It did tick up in the ratings. All right. But, uh, and ABC still finished in last place. Amazing. Ouch. Uh, now it, it, it's true. So while they were putting on Twin Peaks, one of the most interesting, brave and forward thinking shows, the our only other new show of the year to do great ratings was America's Funniest Home Videos. Yes. That's right. amazing. Can you believe this? So ABC. Why would you, so why would you renew Twin Peaks when you can do a rerun of uh, Tennis Ball in the Balls? On uh, America's Funniest Home Videos. Would do better in the ratings and cost basically nothing. Yeah. Why would you renew Twin Peaks for season two? It doesn't make any sense. It will really hadn't done well in the ratings. It, you know, the more, the more I think about this, the more Michael Caputo and H. Keith Poston 
I mean, what about your cranks? Don't <laughs> don't they know how cheap it is to make an episode of America's Funniest Home Videos? Why would they want to keep the show around? No, I'm obviously So kidding. the answer of why they want to keep the show around Holla. Was, Holla hype! Oh, man. You know, today shows like The Americans and Mr. Robots, they're yeah. getting nominated for Emmys. They're on, tw- you know, people are tweeting about them. People are sure. always talking about them. But those shows, man, you want to talk about, you thought Twin Peaks back then got low ratings. Yeah. Nowadays, Oh the, yeah, no, they're Mr. barely Robot they're barely squeaking by. And the Americans. By. Oh, they're barely really squeaking tough. by. Yeah. So Twin Peaks, it had just kept falling like a rock in the first season. It had bad ratings. But the people who watched and talked about TV, they talked about Twin Peaks. They didn't just write articles. These were cover articles for the magazines. You know, people like me were writing in letters. One of the things I did as a kid Mm-hmm. Was I would Not go that. to don't tell us about that. I again. would go to my local library there in Atlanta <laughs> to find articles by the TV critic for the Los Angeles Times, Howard Rosenberg. He was writing the, these didn't come across like something you would read in the LA Times. These were gushing articles yeah. that like a fangirl would write to One Direction. These right. things were hilarious, and you guys, you can still find them online. I say, how did you get to the library? I had to, yeah. You know, that was a more innocent time. <laughs> did you walk? Did you take the bus? Did let you me drive? tell you something. Did uh, you have your own car? Let me, but you don't understand this. Uh, we're going to sidetrack to the TV show Stranger Things, which yeah. is filmed in Atlanta. God those bless. are the houses. That's it. That's... I, that was me. I was those kids. <laughs> I wasn't 11. I wasn't yeah. 11, but I was those kids, and so you'd go to it. Sure enough. So, listen, there was all this hype. Two days after the last episode of season one aired, yeah. David Lynch's Wild at Heart, right. it debuted at the Cannes Film Festival. At the end of the festival, it won the Palme d'Or. What? Palme d'Or, wow. Right. Yeah. Twin Peaks was nominated for a bunch of Emmys. ABC could not cancel Twin Hilarious. Peaks. But you know what it also couldn't do? It couldn't trust Twin Peaks ratings. So, okay. So, again, they, they gambled. They, they took another chance. Yeah, take a, a small chance. chance. They moved Twin Peaks and another uh, low-rated... China Beach was a low-rated show. Man, they moved him to Saturday nights. Yeah, so amazing. Well, yeah. So they didn't have a problem that Saturday nights people were normally out at the movies. It was date night for either the wives or the gumas, depending on how Goodfellas explains it. But you, know, you could get low ratings. It was expected, and there was no competition. Yeah. But immediately, they both China Beach and Twin Peaks started losing to that non-existent competition. Right. They so, were just literally so China they Beach. Move it, and then they, they so they moved it to Twin P- they moved it to Saturday night, and then when it didn't work out, then that's why it got canceled. Then basically, let me get that. No, right. wrong. This what? is another false thing Sweeps. that people no more sweeps. Little Nikki. A lot of people think that okay, they moved Twin Peaks to Saturday night, and they moved the critically acclaimed China Beach to Saturday night too, and that that's what killed the show. But that is not right. The second season premiere. Of season two was a two-hour right. episode directed by David Lynch, and you know what? That aired on a Sunday night. Oh, okay. You want to guess what place it finished on Sunday night for its time period? Uh, sweeps. No, uh, I don't know. Last place. <laughs> That's right. Of the two other big Amazing. networks, CBS and NBC, Amazing. and Fox, low-rated Fox, Be- Twin Peaks finished in winner fourth. Of the, winner of the of the Palm Door director. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So it finished in last place on a Sunday night, not a Saturday night. Yeah. But let's put a pin in that. We're going to get back to that in a minute. Okay. All right. So I want to go back to Calm the— Calm down, Harold. I want to go back to the incredibly wrong Wikipedia paragraph, which reads, With the resolution of Twin Peaks' main drawing point, Laura Palmer's murder, in the middle of the second season. Well, guess what? At the beginning of the season, yeah. they hadn't resolved who had <laughs> killed Laura Palmer. Right. You can't blame Twin Peaks' terrible— poor, not good ratings on them solving Laura Palmer because they hadn't solved them, yet the ratings were awful. The first new Twin Peaks to air on a Saturday night finished 68th out of 91 primetime shows. Oh my the following God. weeks, it did rise slightly to 63, but my fan, my boy there, Howard Rosenberg at the oh, LA Times, Howard. he wrote an article talking about how the show was headed for early cancellation. And it's not just the ratings. People disliked the two-hour Lynch-directed episode, and the next couple. So after the first Saturday night episode aired, the Chicago Tribune TV critic Rick Kogan, he wrote an article, and this is the title of it, Unless Lynch and crew get back on the creative edge, the answer to who killed Laura Palmer will be who cares. And guess what? 
This guy was a fan of the show. This is actually what? a fan dissing I the show. I understand yelling at Lynch, but why, you, you know, the grips and the electricians, like, you know, craft services, why Why are those people getting thrown under the bus? Everybody was. And the show, the ratings were just terrible. God damn you, Rick. Here we go. It's second airing on a Saturday. It fell to 71. Then it fell to 75. That ticked up to 71. These ratings were terrible. Shows rated in the 50s and 60s were being pulled off the air. I was going to say, you know, we're all talking about kind of on the Gifted in the Damn podcast, yeah. we're going to solve some of these misconceptions that have arisen. It's true. In a future podcast, we're going to talk about these ratings when we correct people who believe, oh, they never should have revealed who killed Laura Palmer. ABC forced them to do it. Lynch was right. He said they, quote, killed the goose that laid the golden egg by revealing Laura's killer. Well, sadly, all of those people... Does Incl- Gus from The Strain have a, a Twin hey, bro. podcast? So all of those people, guess what they are? Including David Lynch, they're wrong. What? Now, ratings aren't the only reasons that we're going to explain why they needed to reveal the killer. But hopefully, listeners, you're beginning to understand why ratings did play a part in that. The only positive thing you could say, Mork, about uh-huh. the Twin Peaks ratings was that they were better than China Beaches. Really? China Beach... Was do it even worse. And sure oh, enough, no. China, China Beach, critically acclaimed, Emmy American. nominated sure. China Beach, was pulled off the air because it was coming up on November sweeps. Oh, no. Every time, almost every time, Twin Peaks aired an episode in season two. It was the lowest rated program on air during that time slot. The only time. Only Twin, time. The only time Twin Peaks didn't finish last during its time period was in November. When they revealed the killer. Right. So the second season had been planned out to reveal Laura Palmer's killer in November sweeps. This is kind of based on the hit soap opera Dallas, where they had a cliffhanger of who shot JR. And sure enough, they revealed the killer in in November sweeps because they knew it would be a a boost of ratings. And sure enough, Twin Peaks started doing promoting (laughs) that the killer was going to be revealed. And the ratings did get a boost. The November 10th episode jumped up to number 51 in the ratings. Woohoo! Um, That's uh, golden. So they're still in the bottom half. They're still in the bottom half of the ratings. They're still in the bottom half of the ratings. But they did get a boost by revealing the killer. Now, the following week, it fell back to number 70. But guess what? It beat out another show on the air. Oh, man. There was yet another critically acclaimed show on the air at that time. This is on CBS. It was the show Wise Guy. And Twin Peaks beat wise guy in the ratings there you go and the last episode which uh had spoiler alert remember you've seen all the episodes listeners the episode with leland's death so we're wrapping up the laura palmer mystery it was still rated 72 really bad but it did beat wise guy in the ratings on cbs mork think about this this is the end of the laura palmer storyline with leland's death how what what did you think about that episode in general i i I just I remember it being the most spellbinding thing I've ever seen, and I mean it was there was so many things going on. It was so horrible and and really sad because you knew it wasn't Leland who had done these horrible, horrible, awful things, and you saw you know his soul. I mean you really saw like it. You you've seen villains die, but this was a guy's soul, uh, you know, being destroyed. And I mean, to this day, I mean, it, it's just, it's fantastic. I, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff and it just, it still holds up and it's, it was phenomenal. It, it was. And when we talk about that phenomenal episode of television, yeah. we're also in this episode revealing that that phenomenal episode of television <laughs> barely beat CBS's wise guy in the ratings. <laughs> that, um, that just, that just made the episode even more depressing. Thank, right, you. Thank you for that, Bubba. Not Sorry. not the podcast, but no that episode. <laughs> Just watching watching poor poor Ray Wise do that to himself and read his, read his heart out like that, and uh, Jonathan Banks is just sitting Non-wise there, guy, yeah. giggling away, laughing at our at our poor heroes, um, trying to save his soul. But yeah, no, uh, Bob got away with that one that day. Um, but Wise Guys was Wise Guys. Let's give a little credit. Wise Guys was fun. Had it was all based on Nick Pelleggi, who you know it ultimately became Goodfellas. And you had you know not quite. Uh, he was kind of like the lunkhead version of uh, of Agent Cooper, Ken Wall. Ken Wall, the star of Wise Guys. Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. you know like you know definitely you know you know handsome guy, but he did not have Diane. And Kevin Spacey, who's still going strong today with House of Cards, he broke out on that show. It was a critically acclaimed yeah, show. It, Wise Guy in China Beach. Really, people loved him, and their ratings got him yanked. Twin yeah. Peaks, because it had survived. this hook, because it had these fans, it could survive. Yeah, 
No. So okay. so revealing the killer didn't cause the show to be canceled. Instead, that sl- very slight boost it got during the November sweeps period yeah. helped Twin Peaks stay on the air through February. That, that works. That works for something. Okay, so they got three more months. Right. All right, perfect. December, January, February. Beautiful. Now, the ratings did start dripping down. Instead of being in the 70s and in danger of being canceled, now the show's ratings <laughs> dropped into the 80s yeah. in danger of being canceled. So the next bunch of episodes ranked 81, 85, 83, 85, 88. This got us into February sweeps. We talked yeah. about how important sweeps are. Yeah. ABC had Twin Peaks on for a bit of sweeps, but then they said, look, we're getting killed. It had to stop the bleeding. So it pulled the show, and the show didn't have another awesome killer reveal to right. give it that – you know, a little boost. So, okay. So it got pulled right. for horrible, terrible, awful ratings. Right. Why did it get back? Why did it get back on the air at all? Because of people like me, this was when I was in the computer you lab. Son right of a bitch. Lab. Why did you do this to me? Right. That's what we wrote to ABC. People yeah. were sending ABC cherry pie like we're eating tonight. And we're oh, going to take a photo and so tweet out. Delicious. People were, you know, writing. It wasn't just, you know, nerdy kids like us. It, Steven Spielberg wrote ABC a letter and said... Yeah, kind of a nerdy kid. Oh, that's a good point. Kind, kind, of, a nerdy kind of a nerdy kid. kid. <laughs> he wrote ABC and said, hey, put Twin Peaks back on the air. So they got a lot of support. Right. And they thought, okay, we need to put it back on the air. Now, sure. let's let's focus on ABC. Last place ABC again, you now, Mark. All right. So, you know, any show that op- was opposite NBC's Cheers was getting crushed. And sure enough, ABC at this point was airing a show called Gabriel's Fire. Ooh. And like everything else against Cheers, it was, Do we have any, it was getting any, crushed. Does anyone have any idea what was Gabriel's Fire? Was it was it a medical show or a legal show? I think it was a legal show, but do not quote me on that. All right. I don't know. So it was ranked in the 50s, which okay. was okay. And it was beating a CBS show that was on opposite Cheers. The CBS show was the first live-action version of The Flash on Amazing. TV. And Amazing. it was opposite Cheers, so crushed. Whoops. With February sweeps over, ABC and CBS, they had been crushed against Cheers. They had to do something new. ABC thought maybe Gabriel's Fire could work if it wasn't opposite Cheers. Yeah. So they moved it to Wednesday night at 10. Okay. Sounds like a good plan. So what is ABC going to do? ABC's got to put something opposite Cheers. Sure. They put the sacrificial lamb, Twin Peaks. CBS pulled the flash and put on a new show called The Antagonist. Ooh. Guess what? Suddenly you had <laughs> Cheers... And then you had the antagonist. On Fox, you had Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, uh, Luke and Guess Jason. where Twin Peaks finished in these four shows that were on? Cheers, the an- new show, the antagonist, Beverly Hills 90210, and I'm, Twin Peaks. Where I'm going to guess? Guess, guess it did not beat Cheers. That's my one guess. It didn't beat any of them. Sure enough, it finished in last place for its time slot. It was down at number 77. Oh my so God. April saw Twin Peaks still in last place of the four on Thursdays. Ratings were always in the 70s or 80s, with May sweeps approaching. ABC had to yank it off the air again. It's like, we can't have this. This is how we, we can't get win. revenue. ABC couldn't win. And so it's yanked off the air. We wrote our letters again. Type, type, type. Once May sweeps, we were over. And it was safe from really doing any damage to last place ABC. The final two episodes of Twin Peaks aired together on a Monday night in June to a number 59. Hey, brand new Twin Peaks. <laughs> 59 rating. And is that combined? <laughs> So really, like, right. actually, no, 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 no. They don't add it. up together. It no. was for that period. It was fifty nine. Wow. So if you want to argue, if listeners want to argue that the quality of Twin Peaks maybe took a dip yeah. after Laura Palmer's killer was revealed, hey, that's you fair. know that's an opinion. Yeah. But right now we're talking facts. Stick to the facts. And Jack. so if you want to believe that Twin Peaks ranked in the seventies before they revealed Laura's killer would not have been canceled. But Twin Peaks ranked in the 70s and 80s after the killer was revealed. If you want to buy that, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> Benjamin Horn has some houses in Ghostwood Estates he'd like to sell you if you believe that kind of stuff. So just to bring the point home even more about how in the second season it didn't matter if it was pre-reveal or post-reveal. Right. The post-Leland's death, post-Leland reveal episode, which introduced Little Nicky, oh, actually Nikki. had more total viewers watching then the pre-reveal episode where Harry, Cooper, and Hawk rescue Audrey from One-Eyed Jacks. Wow. Both were terribly <laughs> rated, and both naturally would be canceled. 
Twin Peaks, it was canceled like a bunch of other shows, like shows that were ranked in the 40s entitled Anything But Love and Married People. Going Places, American Dream, shows that no one has thought of for uh, two years, let alone 25 years, Down Home were canceled, and they, their ratings were in the 50s. Right. How about shows in the 60s like Ferris Bueller and Good Sports and Finale Boys and oh, Guns Finale. of Paradise and Over My Dead Body and Working It Out and Gabriel's <laughs> Fire and Equal Justice and The Flash and Young Riders, and Baghdad Cafe, and the original TV version of Parenthood, and Sons and Daughter, and Doctor Doctor, and Expose, and... Okay, so Twin, Pe- <laughs> Twin, Peaks, Twin Peaks fans, basically what you're saying is, uh, you, and, and not really me, I didn't do anything. You didn't I, write a letter to I, ABC? I, I didn't write a letter. I'm going to need a new co-host. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Catfish is waiting outside. Okay, so <laughs> you, no, I'm giving you credit. Right. You saved the show from being canceled at the end of the first season. Right. And that same fan support pushed ABC to air all the episodes in the second season. Yep. So, which, you know, wouldn't have happened. So, thanks for that. I guess it made it hurt even more when it got canceled. But the moving around the schedule was basically, in your mind, what what, uh, what killed the show? No, 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 no. Twin Peaks had to keep moving around the schedule because every time put it on the air, before and after the murder was revealed, it didn't do well in the ratings. Okay, but the, the very first episode of the premiere did great. And the second episode did pretty well. That's right. So the very first, the very, you know, season one, the premiere, and the, ne- and the episode that aired after that, those yeah. won the time slot. They actually did do pretty well. But you know, Mork, what also did well in the ratings? Uh, the first 15 minutes of the second season premiere. Really? Now let's take us back then to the okay. fall of 1990. Oh, man, I had hair. Oh, those were great times. They were great times. So Twin Peaks... Season two was getting a lot of hype in this pre-internet age. Yeah. It was on the cover of Time Magazine mm-hmm. hyping it. Kyle McLaughlin was a host of Saturday Night Live. Excellent. It was advertised. Articles were written about it. It was a lot of hype. People wanted to see what all the hype was about. Yeah. And they tuned in big. For to the, 15 minutes. <laughs> for the second season premiere. Now, Nielsen tracks ratings in 15-minute intervals. All right. And the first 15 minutes of the Twin Peaks season two premiere was the top-rated show for those 15 minutes. Yeah. Now, let's talk about those 15 minutes, Mork. Yeah, I love it. That was when the really slow room <laughs> service man from the Great Northern, Senior Drool Cup, he comes in, Cooper's bleeding on the floor. Right. Remember how long that scene was. And then the sure. giant appears, and Cooper gives clues. So after those first 15 minutes... Which you liked. You love those. Well, no, because it's actually like he's bleeding on the floor and there's a guy who could help. Who's not helping him? Right. It was great. There was was tension. There was drama. There was what's going to happen. Is he going to bleed out? This is great. A lot of fans love that. But a lot of other people (laughs) thought this is what the hype is about. This really slow scene. So those first 15 minutes won its time period. But then sure. 